all its castle now. And this is our guide. So Riviera <laughs> <laughs> oh no! He was a German speaking Yorkshire man. No, we don't mind. Born in Poland, yeah, so work that one out. We are the best. <laughs> nice to have you on board, Alex. Thank you. Well, I try to use my child. And rebuilt mm. until the year 1504. And unfortunately, we are getting a, an introduction um, to Colditz. Clemens Fox, the baker's boy, a bit like the Great Fire of London, <laughs> <laughs> he left the oven on and the castle burnt down for the second occasion. So everything you see going forward, certainly from this archway all the way through to the left. And this is the, uh, and the building immediately to my right. The carving the over the entrance. Built around 1506. By 1526, everything was well on its way. And in the middle of the 16th century, he actually became a royal residence under August the first and his wife, Princess Anne of Denmark. And that's one of the reasons why I like to stand here. So can you see that jewel coat of art? On the left hand side with the cross swords is for the state of Saxony. On the right hand side. State of Saxony on the left hand side. But the unique thing about that is it's actually stood above that um, archway since 1574. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it does give you a flavour of this. This first courtyard was the German quarters during the war when Colditz was used <laughs> as a prison camp. And this uh, building right in front is the quarters of the uh, Commandant. But it was the workshop during the Second World War. Very instrumental in Captain Pat Reed, Major Littledale, and the two lieutenants Wardles and Stevens escaping from Colville. Did you know they actually escaped to the sound of music? No. No? Nobody knew that, all right. But it is true, and I'll tell you the full story in a moment, too. The building you see there to my right is the Zalaus. It means great all, but it's got many, many other uh, meanings as well. But the ground floor and first floor you see there were the only windows that looked out into the German courtyard during the Second World War from the prisoner of war. From the German quarters, we're going under the archway to the uh, Tiergarten or Animal Park, where uh, the prisoners were allowed to exercise. So our guide is going to tell us something about that. Right. Obviously, you can see probably why it's so difficult to take photographs. For the simple reason, if you go any farther back, you fall off the wall. But the point being is. Out of all the books I've read about all this, it's very difficult to get a decent photograph. In fact, there's only one I can think of. The copper pipe going round to your left was the Commandant Centre during the Second World War. Everything going round to my right was the prisoner of war side. And certainly if you can't see bars on the outside, there would have been bars on the inside. But the sheer profile of the building was always going to be difficult to escape from. For the simple reason, if you could escape from this side of Colby, you would disappear very, very quickly into the forest, into the tear garden. Because this was an animal park which actually was first built in 1520. The grass area you see below actually was allowed to be used for recreation. Well, so they fully came down into Pennsylvania. Down here is the tear garden or animal park where prisoners were able to exercise and uh, some of the escapes were made straight into the forested area there. The rest of the French continue would be marched into Colditz and obviously there would be a pell, a roll call. And for whatever reason on this occasion, the French either convinced, confused the Germans into believing Lurie had returned. 
Later that evening, he actually walked to Rockley. <laughs> yes. Before we enter the section courtyard, here which obviously was the prison is of two of a Dutch officer the and the mannequin the which idea? was used at roll call or appell to confuse no. the count. No. No. And it was uh, a ruse which was used for quite a long time. And you're more than welcome to the liberation of cold this is the chapel, which has only been recently opened to the public. Reconstructed and renovated for 750 years' history of Calder. In fact, we actually sent the Queen an invitation to come three years earlier, but obviously she was never going to come. But actually, she did send the Queen's representative, Sir Simon Macdonald, came, and we had a, a wonderful festival. The chapel itself has been renovated to make it look like it did back in 1623. So with some reflection, you've got to also bear in mind there was no dual of the brilliant white gloss there. And probably you might think it's dour, but actually from the original paintings that have obviously had about, it gives you that traditional feeling. And in fact, my daughter sings in the choir just outside in a little village called Schoenbach. It's remarkably the same. The only exception is the pulpit is actually above the altar. But the main reason for bringing you in here is obviously to show you what the French achieved over the seven-month period. Can you see the wall behind you? That wall is 13 and a half foot thick. The cellar below there is where the French landed. They came down through an air shaft from the third floor of this building down into the cellar behind and landed underneath. They thought they were going to land in the crypt. So what they actually did was tunnel through the rock, hoping to find the crypt. This is in the uh, chapel, and this is one of the escape tunnels, which was dug by the French prisoners. And it is at least 30 feet deep from solid rock difficult to uh, appreciate what it's like from uh, here on the video, but that's the best we can do. Here's uh, Kyle and Sue, our guide, our tour manager, that's waiting to go back to the bus. And here, this cardboard cutout is uh, Lieutenant Airy Neve at the age of about 22 on an escape attempt. I'm going to the coach. We are in Dresden and this is the Maritime Hotel. It really is a very fine space. A huge centre atrium with all the bedrooms off these balconies and these uh, very nice lifts which run on external rails <coughs> they have some nice bronze sculptures quite a lot of nice art actually And here are a few of our party just discussing what to do, getting information from our tour guide, I think. <laughs> this place really is something else. There's one of the elevators. The staff taking the new linen to the bedrooms. And Carol's over here. 
just waiting for us to make the best of the day. <coughs> it really is a very comfortable hotel. Standing on the uh, second floor balcony where our room is situated in the Maritime Hotel <coughs> in uh, Dresden. Now that all the lights are on and these big chandeliers are illuminated, it makes a very nice sight indeed. The lighting is quite dim. These uh, lights are not particularly bright, but there's so many of them along each of the, um, <coughs> the landings, uh, of which there are seven, that uh, the whole atrium is very nicely illuminated. We've just walked out of our hotel, which is uh, just five minutes walk away, and we are here on the River Elbe. <laughs> the old city, which is totally reconstructed after the uh, devastation of 1945, is over here. <coughs> And uh, this bridge is, oh, I'll have to check the name in a moment. But coming down the river. This bridge over here is definitely the Marion Bridge. of the main bridges between the two parts of the city. <laughs> and yes, we've got the name of the other one. It is the Augustus Bridge. All these bridges and the buildings are made of local sandstone and uh, it weathers to a blackish grey colour so as stonework it's not particularly attractive.